Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Incarnate live stream here on Twitch. Welcome, welcome, everybody. How's everyone doing? Hope you're all doing well. Today, we're going to be doing a stream on understanding filters. I'm super excited about this stream. Filters can be kind of confusing and trying to find out where everything is. So let's first just break down what we're going to be doing in the video. One, we're going to be breaking down the filter tool and all its features. Two, we're going to be use, doing use cases. So either we can go over maps on the explore page, clone and edit them, or we can go over some examples that I've prepared. We can let the people watching decide on that. And then we're going to end it with a Q&A on filters. Okay. Awesome. All right. First, let's do some quick announcements. Just real, real quick. You're going to see the, this little alarm bell up here. As you know from last week, we just released a new Babylonian pack for the Fantasy Regional style. So go check that out. Again, Fantasy Regional style. And we also have a contest coming up. So go ahead and check that in your announcements. Click the link to go to the Reddit contest link. And if you haven't seen it yet, check out Philip's awesome Mesa scene time lapse on our YouTube channel because it is awesome. Go check it out. Just so you know, Philip will be uh, modding. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask Philip. Okay. All right. Let's jump in. First, we're going to go ahead and create a new map and we're going to jump right into creating, um, playing with filters a little bit. So first, let's just go with, since we're just doing the editor, we don't have to do any major crazy editor resolution. Again, I'm just going to break down the filter tool. So you're going to find the filter tool is at the bottom right here. Not this one, this one right here. It's like a little magic wand. Just imagine fairy dust and sparkles and everything when you click it. And then once you click that, there's going to be an option to add a new filter. And then right here, you'll have a list of filters that you can use. Now, keep in mind that there's way more filters than this. Okay. Most of the filters, are these are just pre pre-selected filters that work well with this style. So you're not limited by just these in this list. There's so much more, okay? There's a lot of them. So let's go through some of the filters. The first one is color filters. Color filters were basically all the filters we had before filters 2.0. So you have like clarity, faded, saturation, and so on. If you want more than just these 10 right here, click that plus button. Okay, and then you'll find that there's a, a menu that you can scroll down with all the various options. There's quite a few of them to choose from. They're all really good. And then if you want, you can also take a look at how the filters are set up. I wanna show you that there's an opacity slider. That just means how much of the canvas is gonna be affected by the filter. And of course, there is the layer that it's on. And that's actually super important. And when we go into use cases, I'll explain a little bit more how to deal with layers and opacity. There's also a flatten to the BG option. Just know that we'll flatten only what's onto the BG layer. That means anything made with the subtract mode or the default canvas without any land on it, okay? There's also a delete function. You can just go ahead and delete it and it's gone. And that's it. And there's a couple more options as well. Let's go over to texture filters. Texture filters are basically particular textures that overlay your map. And so it's going to add things like artifacts, god rays, paper tear, rain, vignette, that kind of stuff. And it's not limited to just these. There's a heck of a lot more. You Again, go to that plus button. Just make sure that you follow that yellow brick road, that yellow line right over to that plus button. And there it is. Now you'll notice that there isn't any right now. So you'll have to go ahead and click this button first or press that F key. It's gonna open up that catalog. Now this is not all the textures that you can work with. You'll notice over here, you don't see any other packs and styles. Well, the only reason why you're loading Fantasy Battle Map uh, textures is because it's in Fantasy Battle Map. So if you want to use textures from different styles, just go right over to search all styles. Now wait a moment for the screen to load. Now, once it's load, you'll see that all of the options pop up. Just go ahead and select all. And it's going to select every single one of these. Might give it a second to do it. So now they're all selected. And you'll see all the various options. Now, just keep in mind that the preset texture filters that come with it have already been preset, right? So all the things that you need uh, have already been adjusted with the saturation and all that other stuff. Let me give an example. So you have this filter right here. So 
because this one's already built in, it's already going to have like a, a preset opacity, preset layer, whether it's stretch or repeat. But if you were to add a filter that was not, not in the, um, not in the presets, then you're going to have to do some changes then. And I'll show you how that works. So for instance, this green, this vintage green filter is not from fantasy uh, battle maps. I think it's from watercolor cities, right? So if I was to apply it, you're going to notice that it's set to a normal blend mode and this uh, opacity. And that this is not the proper blend mode to use because it's just going to show the texture flat by itself without any kind of blend mode that makes it blend in better. And normally for this one, it would be overlay. And since, again, because it's not a preset filter, you're going to have to mess with it, okay? For this kind of filter, this green vintage one, overlay is the one that's most used. But of course, don't limit yourself to one blend mode. Scroll through all the various blend modes and explore, because filters is an exploratory kind of adventure. You're going to try different filters on different maps and different combinations, and you might surprise yourself what you come up with, okay? I'm going to go ahead and delete. That, so that's texture filters. And don't forget, just click search all styles, okay? And that way they'll all pop up. Let's move on to the next one, which is HSBC filters. Real quick, if anyone has any questions, don't be afraid to ask. Go right into the chat. By the way, hello, one ill 214 So let's go to HSBC filters. There's one preset. It's black and white. But there you can also, again, follow that yellow brick road right over to that plus button. And there's going to be a ton of options. All right, and I'll go through use cases with HSBC because HSBC is a bit different. But if you are familiar with, um, if you are familiar with the advanced settings, the filters, HSBC settings for stamps, it's pretty much the exact same concept with um, the filters: hue, saturation, brightness, and contrast, with a couple extra goodies, including this um, layer, and that comes pretty much pretty. That comes pretty much in handy. So we'll go over that. Let's go ahead and add one more. I think there's one more filter, and that's these miscellaneous filters, which is a tilt shift and a blur. So now, if you don't know what a tilt shift is, I'll explain this one. Tilt shift is just where the blur is going to be a, a stripe of focus section right here, and you're going to have a blur right here. And you can change a lot of the settings here with this. You can change the center position. You can change the X and Y. So if you want the blur to be at the top, bottom, whatever. There's also that blur size. That means how much blur there's going to be. There's also the angle, which means just rotating it. And you can also change it from linear to radial if you want. Let me go back to that preset. So where radial means like a circle. So the center will be focused while the outside will be blurred. G... Oh, GM's Magazine. Yes, very similar to Photoshop. Not exact, but very, very similar. So if you understand a little bit about the blend modes in the blending modes in Photoshop, that will be useful for you to understand some of the blend modes here in Incarnate. So absolutely, they are ridiculously similar to actually now that I think about it. So go check that out. And as always, you can change the layer on this. Now there's more than just uh, a tilt shift blur there are other blur options where there's a full blur and it will blur everything and this is extremely useful if you want to blur only the water that you have so that because when water is running it looks a little blurred or at least when you're trying to take like a video or a couple snapshots it kind of has that blurred look to it it works for that you can also use it to show maybe the first floor of a building is focused because it's a layer above everything. And then the blur can be below to show maybe the first floor blurred and the second floor of a building is focused. So there's a lot of use cases with that and we'll go over that, okay? Filters are ridiculously useful. So, and you can also turn off any filters that you have real quick. I'll show you up here. There's something called show filters. Now, I just want to let you know that just by turning the show filters on and off, it doesn't necessarily, turn off the data that the filters are there. So if you feel like there's some lag in the with the editor and you can't understand why there's all this lag, you might want to consider deleting all your filters first and then adding them later at the end because filters can cause some lag. Depending on the editor resolution, 3, 4K, I've noticed 4K, it can get kind of laggy once you start adding up 
some filters. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, how come the corrupted essence and doom and gloom don't show up in the custom color filters? Custom color filters? Hmm. Uh, well, they do show up right here. The color filters right here. Doom and gloom. Do you mean like in other ones? You want to explain, explain King? Sorry if I don't understand. They show up right here in color filters. Oh. And if they're not showing up, that's not good. Uh, it would depend on the style that you're working with Oh, when you're not in battle map. Well, let's go test that out real quick. Just one moment and we'll go over there. I did show you that you can open up various things, but let's just say it's fantasy regional. Real quick, I'll open that up. And let's just verify that that is correct. And I'll show you how to access it if it'll let me. If it's not, then there might be a problem there. We can kind of go over that. Honestly, I think a doom and gloom isn't something that should be limited to just one map style. I can think of a lot of things that it could be used. Let's just verify that I understand it correctly. First, let's go open up this. You have color filters, click that plus button. And then we should see, is it in here? Oh yeah, I don't see doom and gloom. Well, that's unfortunate. Let's go over to, hmm, you're right. It's not there. I do not see it. And that is a problem. Let me just select all of them real quick and see if I can find anything. One moment. Takes a little while for the select all to pop up. Okay. Um, you know what? I think you're right. I don't think it pops up for that style. I will petition to have that added because I think it would be nice. Would be nice to do that. The other option that you have is you can just open it in battle maps and then just, um, so if, let's just say that you want to have the doom and gloom filter. This is a workaround until we add that. But my suggestion would be just open it in Fantasy Battle Maps 2.0. This is kind of not, not the best workaround, but but it's a workaround that you can use until we uh, until we add that. So I'll make sure to do that. You could just open up Fantasy Battle Maps, and then when it comes to textures and stamps, all you have to do is just kind of open up the catalog and then just switch over to Fantasy Regional Stamps, and then you'll still have the Fantasy Regional Stamps and same thing with uh, the textures. Just turn off, just turn off uh, Fantasy Battle Map and just go to uh, whatever one you want to use, which is the Fantasy Regional. Okay, so that would be just a, a workaround until we add those to the other, because really they those should be available. Those custom ones uh, should be available for every stamp style because they're custom or they're uh, color. So I'll look into that. Sorry that they're not there. I hope the workaround will work for now. Okay, is there any other questions you have about uh, the filter tool before we kind of move on to the next thing? Please let me know. Exciting stuff. If no one has any further questions, then we'll move on to that second segment, which is we're just gonna break down, we're gonna uh, do use cases. And there are a couple ways we can go about this. We can go on the explore page and clone and edit some maps and then maybe just you know put some filters on it i've also put about five maps here that i've made and we can also test those out with uh, with filters so really it's up to you and everyone here which one you want to go about it should we just peruse the explore page and pick one or go with these kind of backup maps that i've added here either works fine with me i don't really mind so i'll let you guys decide i am going to go over these maps here and we'll also just go over the explore page real quick lots of good maps here we can probably go over a couple of them i'm going to scroll through if you any of you see one that you like we just have to make sure that it is clonable it has to have this clone and edit some users might not want their map to be cloned and edited for their own purposes and that's entirely up to them i try to make mine as cl make mine clonable so we got to again make sure that it says clone and edit like that we can kind of go over some of these and kind of pick one there's a lot of really good maps people have really just been slaying it with maps so i'm super excited there's some really cool ones too here with these the new babylonian style what about this one should we clone and edit this one by queen reg reg regent regent not regent because it would be pronounced it so queen regnant but yeah let's maybe do this one let's go over this one and take a look so let's just clone and edit it and add some filters to it we're going to do some use case stuff. 
Yeah, they are really good. Man, people have been making some awesome Babylonian maps. Seriously. I thought mine was pretty cool, but then seeing others, I'm like, oh, never mind. It's not that great. <laughs> it's not that great after all. Now, I did do a stream earlier in the month on how to make printer-friendly maps. That video is gone now because we're not an affiliate or partner yet with, with Twitch. But when we are, we'll be able to keep videos for up to 60 days. So right now we're limited to 14 days. And of course, if you missed it here on Twitch, don't worry about it. Go check out the YouTube channel. We go ahead and upload all of our Twitch videos right over to YouTube pretty much on the same day. I'm gonna And expect that in the future as well. So this map is great. I really like it. And they've only got one filter on here, and that's that God Rays. But let's say that we want to add some extra stuff in here. I even see some God Rays in the uh, stance. Let me check. There they are, some God rays right there. Just some additional God rays there. Nice, nice. So we add in some God rays. I like that. Let's say that let's say that you want to add some more reddish tint to it. Because when I think of Babylonian, I kind of think desert. Look at this. You've got some nice mesas right here, that reddish color. Uh, the yellows kind of help to make that pop, and so do some of those greens to help make some of those oranges pop out. But what if, if we want to add a little bit of a reddish tint to it? So if we go to add new filter, and then we're gonna to go to custom or color filters, not custom, sorry. Open up color filters and go through that scroll and just pick red sky. And it kind of adds that reddish tint to it. If it's too much, you can always drop it down a little bit. So we can drop it to close to about 50%. And if you feel like you just want it to be like ultra red, then you can go with parchment. And parchment just makes things even more red. It even kind of drowns out some of the color, which is not good. You don't want to drown out the color because I actually really like that. You can also change that layer. So let's say I wanted to go to red sky and I only wanted to affect, let's say, some stamps, some of maybe only the textures. If I was to drop it down to layer negative five and boost it up to 100%. And I'm going to go ahead and just turn the eyeball right here. And what that little eyeball does is just turn off that particular filter. And you'll kind of see the difference. It kind of adds a little bit of a reddish tint to it, which actually looks nice. And you're not removing too much of the nice greens and the blue of the dorms and the fountain, right? Because what, that, what you're trying to do is add an, an additional hint of red because you've got that nice red in those mesas. And then one other filter that I would suggest for this one when you're trying to make these colors pop out absolutely is clarity because clarity really makes your, your colors just pop out. So let me turn off clarity real quick and you can see the huge difference. Turn it back on. So you can kind of see that it gets a little bit brighter. The colors pop out. Now I don't recommend using clarity at like a really high opacity because it starts to really look a little kind of odd to me. I mean, you totally can, but me personally, I actually prefer not to do that. And so let me go down a little bit more and you can kind of take a look at it again. Let's go to maybe 66%. It's the mark of the beast. 66! Ah! Oh, we're missing a six. That doesn't count. My bad. So kind of adding in that reddish tint and then putting clarity filter on top of that kind of helps to make it pop out. Let me turn off all the filters and you can kind of see the difference. It still looks great. We're not knocking Queen Regnant's map at all. It looks fantastic, but I do want to show what filters can do to help to give it that extra pop and how to avoid the Mark of the Beast. Okay, so let's just pop that filter back on so you can kind of just see the difference when we add that. Okay, cool. Yeah, I like that. I think that looks good. And, you know, I don't think I would add anything else here. I wouldn't add like a vignette or anything. You don't want to like block out anything. No need to add a tilt shift because we don't want to blur out anything. This looks kind of nice. Unless you're trying to focus on a particular area, you can throw in like a tilt shift blur. Let's go ahead and head out and head over to a different map and a different style. This is Fantasy Regional Babylon. Maybe we should try something with uh, a battle map, right? Let's go ahead and check out some maps. Some of them might not be clonable. Following Phazek. Phazex. Phazex. Hey, cool. I love it. Phazex. This is a great map. I love it. We're going to go ahead and clone and edit it. And we're going to go ahead and do some stuff with it. How would you make the blue of the water pop out more? Oh, I would definitely say the clarity filter. That's the way to do it. That, or you can also add 
um, you could also just boost the brightness and the saturation of your watercolor. You could just do that too. But for me, clarity generally works the best. You can also add light sources if you want a couple light sources with various blend modes. It also does it. Me personally, though, clarity always always works. Let's go ahead and open up this one. Wow, it's only been 19 minutes. Nice. While this is loading, there's some things that we wanted to suggest as well. We did it on our Discord server uh, in the general chat. We had talked about the idea of maybe people would like to send in their maps to do like a touch up, what we're calling a map makeover. Well, map makeover is basically where you send us a map that you want us to touch up and we will touch it up live on stream. So if you have a map that you worked on and you want someone to touch it up, that mean, and if you don't know what touch ups are, that means like lighting, shadows, details, that kind of stuff. That's the kind of stuff that we're going to be doing when we do a map makeover. So go ahead and go to our discord, check out that general chat. I think I've pinned that. So go check that. And if you have maps, go ahead and DM me in discord. So that means direct message me those links. I will add them to a list and then the team will go over them and then we can go ahead and do that. Okay. Make sure that they're public and that they're clonable. Okay. And that way I will, I will protect your original map and I'm just going to clone and edit. So make sure that again, that they're public on your profile and clonable. Once they're on the list, we can go over it. I can clone it and edit it and we can go ahead and do that on stream. So go check that out. So we have this nice kind of winter road. Looks really nice. Look at these awesome tire, these kind of not tire, but uh, wheel tracks here. So it looks like there's been a, a cart coming through here. You've got a broken wheelbarrow. Maybe uh, this is a busted wheel right here. Super nice. I like this. this is, these simple utility maps are fantastic. I really like using them. Let's say that we want this map to be printable, right? So we're gonna make it black and white. So you would wanna go over to your filters and let's go ahead and just turn off all the ones that we have. For now, I'm just gonna delete all these. I think it's okay. Well, actually let's keep them and just go straight over to HSBC. We want, let's say that we wanna make it black and white. So now when you first add your HSBC black and white filter, you're gonna notice right away it's not printer friendly, right? It's not uh, black, it's not really friendly black and white. It's a very broad gray range, right? So the way to go about that is, besides the dropping the saturation to zero, which gives it the black and white, you can also boost that brightness, okay? Now there is one thing that you should note about this, Okay, especially when you're using a map that's like got snow on it. It's already a super white and bright kind of texture as it is. So increasing the brightness might not work. So there are ways to kind of going, going about that. So like in the future, you could grab all of these, uh, all of these cliffs and you can just boost up the brightness. I'm just gonna boost them up like this. Make sure they're nice and bright. Let me see, there's also these cliffs. Let's just select every single one of these and do these as well. This is not really part of filters, but I just wanted to show that some things that you can do to kind of get them to be a bit brighter and more friendly. This is actually not a very good map as an example. <laughs> Why did I pick one with a white? <laughs> not smart. Let me go ahead and pick a different one. Let's do this crater instead. This is one that I worked on. I think this might work better because there's not any extreme brights or darks. And uh, unfortunately, when you're working with the black and white filter with HSPC, uh, extremes with black and white or darks and lights might not work well. So let's use something that's got a little bit more middle range. There's not extreme lights and darks, or at least not too much. This map would probably work better for black and white. So I'll quickly open that up and we'll go over that. There is some kind of dark along the ridge here, but I think it should be okay. Let's go over to filters. I've done quite enough already. I think I can turn all of these off. So there's no filters on it now, but I can go ahead and just go over to here and then add in that HSBC black and white. One moment, things are gonna load a little slow because this map is in 4K. Go straight over to filters, HSBC, and you have that broad gray range, right? So let's try just boosting up that brightness a bit. 
We can boost it up maybe even more than that. There we go. Ooh, I think, let's see here. Yeah, it still maintains that dark black there, so that looks good. And yeah, there's enough kind of white there. Because sometimes when you're working with a map, sometimes when you're working with a map, you just want a very simple black and white, you know? It just depends on you as a DM, uh, if you're working on a campaign, a battle map, and you don't want to have this super complex battle map with all the varying color and everything. You just want a very simple black and white. It's more utility than it is art. And that's fine. A lot of players and DMs prefer utility over art. And that's okay. It just depends on what you're aiming for. And you know, you can mix a little bit of art with utility, but I definitely recommend putting a lot of utility into your maps because that will be absolutely necessary if you want people to clone or if you want people to like your maps. Utility is is key. Art's not the only one. So you could have pure utility and very little art skill and people would probably still end up using that map because that's what DMs are looking for. So for those of you who are private contractors and you're trying to create uh, maps for DMs and stuff, kind of keep that in mind. So this map actually turned out okay with uh, black and white. Personally, it looks better in color, but if you, this would be a much easier to print than the color, obviously. Let me turn the filter off here real quick and you'll see this would be so much color taking up all this ink. Hey Nuda, welcome. Glad to have you here. So I would definitely recommend um, when you're making a black and white map that it not have very uh, extreme ranges in black with the brights and darks. Okay, let's go ahead and jump over to another map. We've done one battle map. We've done one fantasy regional HD map. Let's go check out some other ones. There's also this mountain pass map that I, I think that's also in the thumbnail. If you want to download that map, you totally can. Uh, once I add that to YouTube, I, I think the link to that will be there. So let me go ahead and open this one up and I'll show you the various options that we want to do here. Because there are so many different things. When you're applying your filter, you you want to think about the overall ambiance that you're trying to accomplish, right? So for example, earlier we did those Babylonian kind of a desert mesa feel to it. So we added red to pop out, right? Because you're going to use filters to do things uh, that you normally can't do, right? So filters are there to help you make colors pop out. Focus on one area using blur. Um, you can use vignette to to blend out the edges. You can use uh, the various color filters to add a monochromatic feel, whether you want it to be black and white, whether you want it to be red, whether you want it to have this bluish filter, things like that. All right, so we have this one right here. I've added a series of filters to it. Uh, there's this wonderful a watercolor paper filter, which I absolutely love, and I totally use it on more than just watercolor. I'm going to go ahead and just delete all of these, and I'm not going to worry about saving it. So I'm going to delete all these, and we're going to add some different feel to it. So you can kind of go with a different feeling. Let me just delete all these, because all it's doing is just causing lag on my computer. So bear with me one moment while I delete those. There we go. And you kind of see what the map looks like without any filters whatsoever on it. You see, it's totally, it looks totally different from what it was. All the grays are there. You see that red's been removed. The vignette's been removed. It just, it, the map doesn't look entirely different, but it did add a different ambiance to it by adding a filter to it. So let's say that you want to, maybe let's say that it's like cold out and you want to show that. You can add in like an overcast filter, which is going to give it a bluish tint to it. So let's say there's clouds above and you want to show that it's like a stormy, maybe not stormy, maybe it's just overcast with some light sprinkle of rain. So you can go in and then add in a new filter and there should be some rain filters in here. Let me go texture filters. Let me go plus sign here. Remember it's going to take you over. Open up that catalog and I'm going to go again, select every single one of them and there should be a rain one. I think it's normally in fantasy battle maps, though I don't see any reason why those shouldn't be available really in all the styles. So let me see if I can find that rain. Let me show all titles so I can kind of see. Sometimes it's hard to know what each thing is when you're doing your filters. So don't forget to show your titles. That way you can kind of see it. So there's a rain filter right here. I kind of click that 
and you'll see there's kind of this rain coming down. Let me zoom in. You can kind of see it. I can boost up here like this. And you can kind of see the rain. You can also change it to make it repeat, make it bigger or smaller. If I was to switch over to repeat, it would change it. You can even bring it down like this to change the size of it. So if you want to show a nice rainy scene, you can do that. You can even take some, let's say some blood or something, change the hue to blue, and then make it look like puddles of water and just change that blend mode. All right, well, if Philip doesn't get to it already, that's a really great question. And uh, honestly, when it comes to lanterns, I would totally recommend just adding a light source to it because you're, what you will try to do is kind of create a glow. And the way that you go about glow is I'm just going to select all of my styles so they're all selected. And then you're going to go into that search field and just type in light. So wait one second for these to load. Unfortunately, when you're trying to open up all of these, it's trying to load all these stamps at once. So it's not freezing up or anything. It's just taking a while to load everything. If you type in light in that search field, you're going to see a bunch of light options and their effects. So there are a couple that I recommend. So there's this regular light one right here that has a kind of more yellow than orange. That one works great. Um, you can also use this darker orange and that's great for HSBC. I'll quickly just add it real quick so you can kind of see what a light looks like. And there's various kinds like a window and all that stuff. Let's just quickly add a light source. All right, and my recommendation as well is to make sure that you put the light source on layer five, okay? And the reason why that is is because you want the light source to affect every single thing that's around it, right? You would hate to have the light source underneath a cliff and underneath a rock. That wouldn't make any sense. You would expect the light source to be emanating and kind of lighting everything within the, the immediate vicinity, right? So make sure that you put it on layer five. And if you put any filters that are going to fade out that light, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to put them on a layer four. So let me give you an example. Let's say that we want it to be nighttime and we don't want to accidentally fade out that light. So we'll switch over to here. And we're gonna pick what's called a night filter. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this night filter right here. Okay, oopsie. And you're going to have to change the blend mode as well. One second. I think there's actually a default one, but we'll go through uh, the various ones. One second while I go over that. Let's see here. Where are you? One moment. Oh, that's pretty. Whoa, it's like all crystally now. Whoa, my eyes. My eyes. Love it. Uh, let's go with multiply. That kind of works out okay. And see that light source right there? You see how it's kind of dulled out? That doesn't look good, right? So let me drop that down a layer and make sure that that light source is on layer five. Let me see, where is my filters real quick? Oh, the default is overlay. Good choice. By the way, there we go. Thank you. Okay. And I got to make sure it's on the right layer as well as the light source is on the right layer, layer five. And then I'll show you what happens if I take it down. You see that it gets affected. Oh, whoa, it acts really weird under that. Oh, cool. That's not bad. That's actually kind of cool. Kind of interesting, actually. That's super weird. Yes, the default is that. And this might be a different one, actually. I think I'm using the wrong one as well so i'm going to delete this i think there's supposed to be a built-in one with all the settings already on it so that's kind of weird that it's doing that bizarre oh there it is texture night filter right there i think it should be all the there we go over oh, wait night filter multiply six, there it is right there okay so now we can go over put on layer four and let's find that light source too real quick absolutely recommend that you put the light source on layer five above or whatever above whatever your night filter is because again if i drop it down a layer below it will kind of affect it so i hope this is helpful also if it's not enough light you can always add multiple light sources and that i generally do that by the way i wherever the light source whatever that is let's say it's a candle or a torch i always like to have a one light stamp, a brighter one on top of it, and then like another stamp, light stamp that's larger, that's a halo, and that's kind of like the light that is kind of being cast in the general area, as well as that bright light in the center. Let me add a torch real quick. 
just so I can kind of show you what I'm talking about. One moment. Let's tie back in a torch. I think there should be one. I'll show this. This is absolutely filter related. Uh, okay, so let's use torches from the right style. There's this one. Obviously, you want to use a torch that's lit. I don't recommend using a torch that's not lit. That would be weird. I'm just going to place it right here real quick, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to make sure to put it on the right layer as well. Let's put it a layer five above. Also, this one, let's put first light source right on top where the flame is first, and then put another one much bigger like that. Now, if you don't like that and you want something different, you can use the other light sources because there are some. There's also an orange one, I believe, as well. One second. And maybe that might work better because look at the light source. It's kind of an orangish color. So maybe that would work better. So let me apply that real quick. So you have a little orange one right here. And then we're going to add another one on top of that. And you can experiment and put on other lights as you see fit. You can put a smaller one on top of this. Totally recommend just exploring with blend modes and stuff like that to see what is the best arrangement that you want. I honestly like to use multiple, multiple light sources because I really want to make it more realistic. So play with blend modes. Try changing the hue. Let's say that you want like an eerie green lit crypt. You can totally change the hue. So factor that in. And remember, always put your night filter below your light sources so that way it doesn't blur it out or kind of, I don't know, drown it out. You don't want to do that. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. And you also want to keep in mind when you're doing filters about layers. So I'm going to give you a quick pro tip about about um, making sure that they're, when you're changing layers of filters that some of the stamps aren't being above the, above the filter and below it. So what I normally do when you're coming to that time, getting to that time when you want to uh, apply your filter, make sure to group because grouping will help. So if I group this, You'll notice that this entire group is on layer negative two and that my filter is on different layers, positive four, okay? So grouping things to, to work with certain layers, filters is absolutely important. For instance, let's say that you want a section of your map to not have the night filter or whatever filter and you want another section of the filter, another section of the map to have the filter on it. Okay, so always keep in mind grouping and definitely use clipping masks because clipping masks will actually negate the filter because a clipping mask is a stamp and can be on a layer. So I just want to give you a heads up about that real quick. There are only two layers, FG and BG layer. Those are paintable layers, right? Filters are going to affect the FG and the BG no matter what. Okay, only filter, only stamps on layers negative five to positive five, you can avoid by putting the filter below the stamps, okay? But let's say that you want an area of your map to not be affected by that. So the, what I would do is you would add in clipping masks, and this is part of the filter thing. Now, if you don't know where clipping masks are, you can't actually type in clipping mask into the search field. It won't show up, actually. So let me type in clip real quick. And you'll notice that nothing shows up. So instead, what you're going to want to do is type in edge. And once you type in edge, you'll see that they're right here. There's a edge smooth, edge soft. Okay. I don't, I'm not going to break down clipping masks. I'll do that for another video, but I want to show you how you can uh, negate a filter's effects on a certain land mass or area using uh, clipping masks. Okay, so let's be mindful of where the filter is. The filter is on layer uh, negative or positive four, I think. So if I put a clipping mask on top of above it, then the filter you'll notice is not actually being affected by that. So let's say that you uh, let's give an example. Let's say that you had, this is all water right here. Let's say that we just took out all this stone and filled this in with water. You would just fill in this entire section with clipping masks, okay? And then make sure you put that on a layer uh, below or above whatever your filter you want. Let me give you a quick example. One second here. I think I can show you what I'm talking about. A lot easier than just trying to do it. So let me just show you. I'm trying to talk about it. Let me show it to you. One moment.
Whoa, that doesn't look right to me. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and return to my maps real quick. I'm going to refresh the page. It's probably old data. One moment to just refresh the page. I'm really glad that helped, Nuda. That's awesome. Okay, we're just going to save and ref we're going to refresh the page a couple times, and we'll go ahead and move on to the next step. Uh-oh. What's going on? There we go. All right, that was weird. Let me just show you real quick uh, applying some some clipping masks so that you can kind of create this illusion of water flowing. So let me show you that real quick. You might find this really helpful. Now I did this on the waterfall pagoda map. I think that's in the time lapse. I've been racking my brain on how to use clipping masks. Dragon spawn. I guarantee you we are going to be doing a. Uh, we're going to be doing a an entire stream on how to use clipping masks, and I'm excited about that because the case uses for for clipping masks is nearly endless. There's so much that you can do. I'll just do a minor preview here because it's related to filters. So let's just quickly add them here, and I can kind of show you show you a trick that I use. So let me just go ahead and remove these filters. I don't want them anymore. Okay, so let's say that I want to put some water in this section right here. Okay, so first things first, I obviously want to add some a water texture to it. So I'll just quickly add a water texture. And then I will show you how to use that blur feature, which is extremely helpful. So let's go with, oh, let's go with a darker, maybe, I don't know, let's, take, let's just add it and see what it looks like. Oopsie, I'm not on the right layer. Let's just go with this one. I'm going to turn that softness on, off, off, sorry, and just kind of fill in this whole section right here with water. Don't mind the luminosity blend mood. <laughs> Don't mind that. One sec, and I'll just do show you real quick what I'm talking about, because this is actually a really cool trick, but it is slightly time consuming because clipping masks are something you have to add by hand. So I don't recommend using like a giant space for this. Let me just go ahead and fill this in real quick. Now let's say that you want the, you want this water to show up as being blurry because it's moving, right? So the way that I would go about that is you would take a bunch of clipping masks basically and just add them on top right here but you also want to make sure that they're below all of the, make sure that they're below uh, all the stamps. Okay, because what we're trying to do here is kind of create the idea. Let me just bring it down to layer. Let's go with layer. Make sure that it's not taking away any stamps real quick. Let me just add it. I don't think it's hiding any stamps. So let me just go copy and paste and kind of add a bunch here. And I'll give you just a real quick demo on what I'm talking about. I'm not going to do the whole thing because believe me, that's going to take a minute. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do a little bit. So let me quickly apply a blur filter. Now these clipping masks right here, edge, these clipping masks, I'm probably going to end up holding down shift and selecting all of these and then kind of grouping them. So that way they're all on the same layer and I didn't accidentally, um, I didn't accidentally add them uh, to the wrong layer, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead and quickly add a blur filter to it. Now some of this land should stay focused. So let me add this. We're gonna go over to for blur, full blur. And then we're gonna drop this down several layers until we get beneath the clipping mask. Okay. So you'll notice that right here, when I add the, one second, when I add the clipping masks to here, you'll notice that all the textures that I have on the FG layer, they stay there. Okay. And that way you're not having your, your land texture. You're not having your land texture be blurred with the, with the water, right? So this requires careful planning. You want to put together your whole composition. You want to uh, put all of the stamps on one layer uh, by grouping them and then putting the clipping masks below all of those stamps 
grouping those, putting them on a separate layer, and then adding your blur filter. And then the, the areas with the clipping masks are the ones that uh, will not be blurred, okay? Only the water on this BG layer will be covered because the clipping mask is a stamp and you can change the layer that a stamp is on. So keep that in mind when you decide to create land masses that you don't want to be blurred, but you want the water to be blurred, okay? I Like I said, I did that with the waterfall pagoda and I think it turned out rather nice. So there's that. I'm gonna do one more, and I'm gonna also answer some any questions that people might have. I think we're just gonna let this go for an hour. I've kind of discovered that longer streams are okay with Twitch. I was kind of going with shorter ones because of YouTube and its algorithms, but with Twitch, we can go a little bit longer, and there's nothing wrong with that. Let's go ahead and open up the Red Mage's Dungeon, another map that I've made, and I'm gonna go ahead and just do some changes to that map and we're going to try a different ambiance. If you have any suggestions about what kind of ambiance you want to see, feel free to ask. And yes, I just love saying ambiance. Ambiance. Just just rolls off the tongue. It's just a it's just a great word, right? Just sounds good. Ambiance. I just got maybe I can way I can say it for ambiance. Wish there was an echo. I need to add like an echo. Oh, ambiance. <laughs> Okay, so I've added these filters here. I'm going to go ahead and delete these, and we're going to do some different things to them. I want to show you some other filters that I really like to use and are actually quite useful in a lot of different maps. Okay, let's see here. Let's delete this. Apps. Oh, I love hearing that command to bond. All right, so... What I've done here is removed all the filters from my Red Mage dungeon, and there's so much that we want to do to it, right? You have this kind of grayish um, overall color to everything, and that grayish is actually great to apply to apply uh, filters to because you're not trying to clash all these colors together. So that works kind of nice. So earlier I had talked about using filters to do a lot of work for you instead of texturing. So instead of texturing in all these artifacts into your background and onto your floor, you see how there's not much, there's kind of an empty space right here. And you see there's not much for artifacts in that negative background space right here. Let's say that you wanna add something to that. You wanna add more texture, but you don't wanna do it by painting 12 different textures to give that effect that you want. So one way to add texture, add artifacts to your map without having to do two hours of texturing is just to use a filter for Lord's sake. So let's use it done, got it? Let's use a filter, okay? And the best filter that I like to use for adding a lot of different textures and artifacts in your map is kind of this old paper texture, okay? And you can find the old paper texture in the i think it's in the parchment world style or the parchment fantasy parchment style i think one second we'll look it up first we have to search all styles and run over to parchment world open that up and you'll see old paper now because we're opening up a map that's not in the parchment world style it's not going to have all the the presets available or presets set for you so you'll have to change it for me personally overlay works the best I apply it and you'll see all these nice artifacts in here. You'll see there's some nice artifacts in there. And normally what I like to do is switch over to repeat. Okay. And you can change the size as you see fit. That's up to you. I'm just going to leave it at repeat at a hundred. Once it gets there, you'll see these nice artifacts. Watch what happens when I turn it off. All those artifacts go away. It looks kind of a little bit more cleaner. And if that's your if the cleaner is your look, go for it. Sometimes people like clean shaven map, okay? But what happens if you're just gritty and you want you want some peach fuzz or fuzz on your map? Then you just boom. You add your old paper and there's some nice texturing in there. Remember to use that overlay fill overlay blend mode. Works the best. Okay? So if you want a little more grit in your map, then this is that filter that you're gonna to wanna to use. That's what I recommend. So there's you go for that one. Now, let's say that you want to maybe have, hello, neck one stream. Glad to have you, welcome. First time chat from neck one stream. Hello and welcome, so glad you're here. 
Awesome. Yeah, oh, absolutely, Dragon Spawn. Don't, don't spend all that time texturing, unless you like it, of course. Nothing wrong with spending a couple hours to make some, to juice up your texturing. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you don't have that time, then absolutely use that old paper texture in parchment world style. Don't forget to switch to overlay, okay? What happens if you want to maybe fuzz out your, your edges a little bit, put a little bit of a frame around it? You know, you want to use vignette. Let's go ahead and use a map that works a little bit better for vignette. I don't recommend using this one for vignette. A vignette is something, it's a filter that you want to apply when you have the majority of what you want visible in the center of the map. Let me open up this Yeglorn map real quick and I'll show you what I mean. So vignette is basically when there's a black kind of frame that's faded out around the edges of your map and that works great if you want to cause the eye to focus into the center of the map. So you have this nice Yegvorn map right here and you want to focus more on this center part. I do have the vignette filter on. Let me turn turn it off so you can kind of see what I mean. I'll turn it off right here. You see there's not much action going on in these corners right here. And you don't want, let's say that you don't want to uh, texture it. You don't want to add more stamps. You don't want to do that extra work. Well, you can cheat. That's okay. You can hide your corners. You can go in and just punch in vignette. Okay. And vignette is going to be a texture filter. So that's where you're going to find it. If you don't see it again, search all styles, go over to fantasy battle maps. And then boom, vignette will be there. And vignette, again, is this nice dark kind of edge that you have right here. And I'm kind of hiding my corners right here because I'm a cheater. I'm a big jerk. I don't want to do extra work in these corners. And you don't have to, okay? You don't have to do that extra work. Throw on a vignette. It will cause that eye. You have this dark edge right here, this dark right here. Your eye is going to want to go away from that dark and center in to wherever the light the light part is. And that's called contrast in art. Your the way the human eye works is when it first looks at a map or an image, it's going to go from the lightest light to the darkest dark. So wherever the darkest shadow to the lightest light is is where your eye is going to just boom. It, sorry if that startled any of you. <laughs> Did we just slap that hard? Bam, that's going to be your way to draw in the eye. And the vignette filter helps to kind of do that, right? It's not focusing on those edges where there's nothing happening. <laughs> so make sure that when you apply that vignette filter, there's nothing in those corners that you give a, give a dang about. You don't care what's in that corner, there's nothing there. And that vignette will help to focus more into the center of the map, which is what you're kind of looking for, right? So vignette is great for framing certain parts or framing the center part of your map works every time personally i use filter a lot especially with battle maps they work great it's great for focusing in the center pieces of your map so i definitely recommend using vignette when you have a chance another really really popular filter that a lot of people use and i use is what's called cool and warm that is a color filter so you'll see that in the list right here. And the reason why I like to use cool, warm and cool is because basically what it does is it takes a lot of these, a lot of these colors are kind of bright and you've got some weird blues and some reds and some yellows here. And let's say that you just want them to blend together better, right? They're all kind of various colors and they all pop out and it's kind of hard for the eye to focus on one area, it's just kind of chaotic. Uh, I like the color palette, looks fine without a filter, but if you want uh, to make it a little bit easier, make the composition easier, you can just go ahead and click cold, cool, warm, and it will add this kind of purple-ish, bluish color to it, and it will help to make sure that all the colors kind of blend in better. And cold warm is one of them that I like to use. I don't recommend using it for every single map, especially if you have a lot of blacks. Like let's say that you have a space, an outer space map, or you have a lot of black because there's a, uh, a dungeon and there's a lot of black in your negative space. I don't recommend using cool warm because that black will turn immediately purple. 
especially the higher up in opacity you go. So just kind of factor that in mind. If you don't want the negative space in your map or the black in your map to not be purple, you want it to be pure black, don't use cool warm, okay? That's just my suggestion. It doesn't necessarily look bad. If you don't care that your background is purplish, that's fine. It's not a big problem. Let's go ahead and delete that filter. We'll keep adding a couple more filters because there's so much that you can do. Real quick, 1054, my time. That's great. Let's go ahead and add some more filters to it. Let's keep going. There are so many options that you that, that you, can, you can choose from. Let's go try using a tilt shift blur, all right? Or turn on light into shadows, then raise it to layer five. Absolutely, King Clown. Beautiful. Let me go ahead and quickly add a tilt shift with a radial blur so I can kind of show you how that looks. So you have this radial blur and you're obviously going to want to bring the blur size way down. The default 40, which is the largest it gets, it seems to blur out every single thing in your map. That's not good. So you want to drop that blur size down quite a bit. And unfortunately, some of it is going to be touching this area right here. So you can drop the blur down. Let's say that you don't want this thing right here to be affected by the blur. I'm just going to boost it up to layer five because I turned it into a group so I can do that and just bring the blur down one layer. Well, let's bring it down. Oh, let's see here. That should be good. And let me take all the text and you should be able to select all text and just boost that up to layer five. One second while it goes up. And so you're boosting all that text so it won't be blurred. You'll notice that this right here is also not blurred. So this is a great way to kind of kind of blur off your edges along here. There's still a lot of negative space here. So I totally recommend still adding that vignette. I'll do that now real quick. Let's just add that. But that blur is helpful. It's kind of nice. Uh, I would also recommend that when you're using both the tilt shift and the regular blur filter, that you plan ahead because it's not as easy as just, it's not as easy as just applying a filter to your map because certain filters might not work for certain maps. So it does help to do a little bit of planning in advance when you're deciding to use a filter, okay? So always kind of think in advance, especially with the blur filter. I don't recommend using blur or tilt shift filter for battle maps because it's really weird to blur out any section of your map, especially where your player is gonna be running around. So there's no need to add any kind of blur filter or tilt shift filter to a battle map. But they do look good on fantasy regional maps, world maps, and parchment maps, especially when you get it right with the radial and the um, directional blurs. So always think in, in advance first, but don't be afraid to also just open up a random map and just apply filters to it just to see how it looks because filters is a game of exploration. Okay. It's all about going and choosing certain, choosing uh, certain filters to make the certain effect that you want, because that's what filters are all about. Filters are all about giving yourself less work, whether it's adding more texturing or artifacts to your background, trying to hide certain areas of your background, trying to blend stamps and textures better, using color filters, whether you want to blur your water, whether you want to add in a light source somewhere using your god rays. So always think of filters as kind of a, as a shortcut to give yourself less work because Filters don't have to, I mean, you don't have to do more work on your map. Think and work a little bit smarter and not harder. Filters are going to be the way to do that, okay? Please, let's go ahead and just spend the last few moments just going and going over any questions that people might have or if there's any maps that you see in the Explore page that you might want to apply filters to. So this is kind of that Q&A time right here. So if you have any questions, we can go over that. All right, we're back here. We're gonna open up Explore Suite. Awesome. Uh, everyone, you've been so great. I, I really appreciate you being here. I appreciate all the questions. Welcome first time chatters. <laughs> great to have you here. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Pretty soon, we're gonna be adding in a built-in notification on our 
on our page, that's incarnate.com. We're gonna be adding a built-in feature that's gonna let you know when we're streaming. So that way you'll know and you can just jump right in. Super Saturn, welcome. Awesome, so glad you're here. Hey, for any of you new viewers, if you missed any videos, we do have a YouTube channel. So every single stream that we up, that we do here on Twitch, we move right over to our YouTube channel. So go ahead and check that out. Philip, if you don't mind, when you have a moment, feel free to add the YouTube channel link in in the chat so that all our new new viewers can go ahead and click that link and go there. Hello, JC Ray. Welcome. Ah, awesome. I'm so glad that you're here. We're doing a stream on filters. Is there anything, any questions that you might have? I'm glad, glad to answer them. It doesn't have to be filter related too if you don't want. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Spend some time with you guys. It's great to see you all. Sure, awesome, thank you for posting that link. Hey, the link is in the chat, that's to our YouTube channel. So if you do miss any videos at all on Twitch, don't worry, we switch them over to YouTube because Twitch deletes streams after a certain number of days. Right now, the limit is 14 days, so if you miss a stream here on Twitch, don't worry, jump over to YouTube, you'll catch that. And like I said a few moments ago, we'll be adding in a banner uh, into our notifications or that pops up on our main page whenever we're about to stream so that way no one is going to miss out okay so that's super exciting all links are also available in the stream description awesome thank you philip awesome does anybody have any questions first time chatters welcome do you do you have any questions about the tool something that we can help you with philip can help you i can help you I'm always glad to help you understand a little bit more about the tool because that's what we want to do. We want to help you to better understand how this tool works. Okay, no question. Oh, wait, here we go. No question. Just want to say I found Incarnate a week or so ago and I've already put together three maps and I love it. Oh, that's great, Super Saturn. Sweet. That is so awesome. Hopefully I can find you on our... I can find you and then follow you and then check out your work. That's so exciting. Awesome. All right. Okay. Well, since there's none of that, let's quickly just go over a, um, let's quickly go over a calendar for what's going on for future streams. So here's what we got going on next week. Next week, the 28th, that's a Monday. We're going to be doing how to break buildings. And what I mean by that is I'm going to show you how to make a building and then to turn it into a ruin. Like it's been dilapidated, a catastrophe, a comet hit it, whatever. Just ultimate destruction. Blood for the blood gods. Okay, because that's what breaking buildings is all about. It's showing the chaos. Mm -mm, chaos and destruction. Discord. And then we're also going to be doing a Wednesday stream. That's going to be the 30th Wednesday. And that's going to be how to create throne rooms. Also with fantasy battle maps. Because battle maps are highly requested. And it looks like there's also some achievements in Twitch that we have to, to get. So we're also going to be doing some longer streams. Like a 4 hour stream, an 8 hour stream. Where we just do full on map demos. Where we make a full on world map. A full on battle map. And it's going to last for several hours. So we'll be going to be doing that as well coming up soon. So look for that. If you have any suggestions that you want for future streams, please let us know. Okay? Because we listen to our users. So if you have a suggestion, don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Ask away. Be Mr. Mr. or Mrs. Demandy Pants. It's okay. It's okay to be demanding because we listen. Okay? So ask questions and all that stuff. Okay? Awesome. Yeah, I know, super great plans. I'm super excited about that. There's all kinds of fun stuff. I also mentioned earlier in the stream what's called a map makeover. For any of you who just showed up and new and you missed this, a map makeover is where you just send us a map that you want us to uh, touch up. And what I mean by makeover or touch up is we add some additional lighting, shadows, kind of just beef it up, you know, inject some beefiness into that map. Not that there's anything wrong with your maps, but if you want to touch them up, you want some more details, shadows, stuff like that, go to our Discord and DM me directly. I'm Mati. DM me and I'll go ahead and add 
those maps to a list and then we'll go and do a makeover live here on our Twitch channel. And don't worry, we'll make sure to include the username so that way you get you get full full attribution for your map and we'll make sure to include a link to the original map. Now, if you do have maps that you want to be redone or make or have a makeover, make sure that it's it is one public on your profile and two it's clonable. Okay, so that way I can clone and edit it, and I don't want to, uh, you know, ruin the original map. I only want to work on a clone, and we'll go ahead and do that. So again, DM me. That's direct message or private message me on Discord, and that way we can go ahead and get those get that list started because that'd be really cool. I'd love to touch up people's maps. I'm not going to be the only one. I'm sure Philip and other people on the team might want to do that as well. So I'm super excited about makeup. Uh, makeup i'm super excited about um about doing makeovers so that's exciting you know we might consider some other stuff as well like maybe doing a full editor tour or demo that means we're going to be going over every single to tool in detail every single little toggle every single bar every single thing you can imagine we will be doing that and that will probably be a really long stream as well and maybe some of you will find that useful and we can also go ahead and do highlights and clips from that video if you're looking for specific things we do have videos on our youtube channel um, but they're a little outdated uh, so because we're constantly updating tools, trying to make them better, we're listening to all of your suggestions. And so we're constantly updating it. So if you go to a tool video and it seems a little outdated, that would explain that. Um, so it's kind of hard to create tool videos when we're constantly updating them. But we'll do what we can because there's a lot of goodies to come. We have a lot on our plate. Our team just got a little bit bigger. We got more on our plate, and there's so much fun stuff. I just want to give away everything right now. Just, hey, we're doing this, 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 and this. Tell you all these goodies. Be a villain and just give everything away. No, no, I can't do that. But I want to. I want to tell you everything, but I can't. But let me just tell you, we got a lot of goodies in our bag, okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm really glad that we're streaming too, Dragon Spawn. I, streaming is so much fun. We were doing it on YouTube for a little while. And we just found that Twitch just works a lot better for streaming. There's less delay. And once we kind of get um, a little bit, become an affiliate or a partner, there'll be some more options. So that's super exciting. There is one other idea that I had in mind. We could play like a game, like play Pictionary, where we just make stuff with the tool and people try to guess what it is. And maybe prizes can be involved. That's not set in stone. It's just an idea. We'd love to spend more time with our users, get to know you, check out your incredible art and maps because I want to see it because I draw in, for me personally, I draw a lot of my inspiration from everyone else's work, you know, that's, and my job is to try to inspire you by creating these maps. Hopefully they'll inspire you to kind of make some epic stuff as well. All right. Well, those are all the stream calendar or stream calendars and stream ideas that I have again. If you have other stream ideas, let us know because believe me, we want to do it all. There's some crazy requirements in here. There's like a 40 hour stream or a 25 hour stream achievement on Twitch. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I just, I don't need sleep. I don't need water. I don't need any of that stuff. Don't need food. I'm just going to stream for straight a whole day and an hour. <laughs> uh, awesome. I'm pretty sure we can fit in a four or eight hour stream that, that, um, that pure that full 100 percent editor oh is it accumulative oh wait a minute but that's for the larger ones oh good there's no 25 plus hour ah i am relaxed thank you dragon spawn dm ah deep breath deep breath deep breath i want you to make a custom floating island says king clown oh absolutely floating islands are the shiz i think i even have a demo well, I think I have a little guide on making floating islands. You just flip, you just flip mountains upside down, and then, and then uh, you can put another mountain face up on top, on top of that, and connect. Make sure the trick is just to connect the line work that's on the mountain. So that's kind of a cool trick. I'll have to show you that one. I think, excuse me, I think I have a demo for that somewhere. But I'll look into that float. Maybe just a floating island stream would be a great idea. I love that. 
Show you new tricks, king? Your majesty, can I show the king new new tricks? It's not possible! <laughs> okay, well, besides just chatting with you all, let me let me actually do a floating island real quick. Just while we're here, because this is actually really fun. It's gonna last just a few a few minutes. Just show you how to do it. It's super cool. I'm gonna haha, I'm roping you in and keeping you longer. Mm, you are mine. Mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs> Let's go to Ultra 4K just to bust this baddie. All right, time to break the two. You can do it! Yes, I can. Yes, I can. All right, yeah. Floating islands are sick. I love them. I actually am going to be doing a, a time lapse of a floating island with the new Babylon stuff, so I'm excited to work on that and share it with y'all. All right, well, I don't like all the artifacts on this. So I'm just going to change the background to a different color because that's just the way I am. I'm just picky like that. I'm just going to just check, pick a solid color, maybe black. Just kind of fill up the whole canvas. All right, floating islands. I'll also try to find that demo. I'm not sure where I put it at, but I'll show you how I do floating islands. This isn't really, is this a filter stream anymore? I don't know. <laughs> Real quick, floating islands, then we'll call it good. Fantasy Regional HD, and this works for Parchment, and I think Fantasy World. But real quick, to show you how I do kind of these um, floating islands. Just rotate one completely like this, 180. And I also like to use that transform tool, height. So you kind of have a little bit more depth to the bottom part. And then you just take another another mountain. I recommend using a different one, not the same one, and then just kind of putting it on top like this. And one thing you'll have to fit factor in and keep in mind is that there is some weird edging, weird edges right here that are kind of faded out. So you might have to put some things to hide that. Just depends. These aren't really the best mountains to use for floating islands. I actually prefer the world style, but just give you an example like this and let's say you want it to be more flat we'll just take the height of this one and bring it down like that that's not really a great example that looks more like a tooth it's gonna eat you i'm gonna eat ya. <laughs> the trick is really to line up is to line up the line work let me do a uh, fantasy world real quick and then we'll wrap this up okay real quick so fantasy world this one has a little bit less fuzziness at the end of it but <clears throat> so you have that bottom underneath and then you want to create the top part like this do, do, do. and you can put stuff on top of that mountain if you want to and if it looks too weird i totally understand because you've got the light on this side and the light on this side so you just flip it like that so the light's all on one size and you again you want to match up that line work so i'm going to bring this down to make sure those two brown lines kind of connect to each other like that and then we'll go ahead and change the height on this one and the last thing I like to do which is a lot of fun is just to copy and paste these and change the width to where there's a long spike and you can just add a bunch of these as you see fit like this copy paste one maybe make a smaller one right here and again you want to make sure that line work is lined up maybe you want a smaller one like this Let's say you want to make another one that's darker and in the background filters, drop brightness, put it in the back. Let's bring the brightness down even more. So you have some darker ones. One second while I bring that back. There you go. So you have some darker ones. Copy, paste, put another one like this. So it's technically in behind. So you can do floating islands like that. You just want to go in here with maybe the path tool and fill it in with a brown or just use the, the mask tool. It's up to you. But this is generally how I do floating islands. The spike things are just for fun, but there's a whole variety of things that you can do. Most of the mountains and hills will work pretty good for a floating island. Again, the trick is just to make sure that you line up the line work. That's really the big trick. If the line work doesn't line up, then it's going to look a little odd because that's with that continuity of the line work. So just kind of keep that in mind. Oi, I was actually just working on a map now and saw you were live when I opened Twitch. Hope you're well. Thank you, Nah, Chris. I don't know how to pronounce that. First time viewer, welcome. Ahoy. Welcome. I'm glad that you're here. Awesome.
I'm just showing people how to make a floating island real quick. Even though this stream is titled Understanding Filters, I might have to switch it to Understanding Filters and, hey, in the end, you know how to make a floating island. <laughs> Long title, but I think it might work, okay? So that's basically that. And, you know, what's really also really fun about it is, let me see here. Did I group anything? I don't think so. Now, why isn't the little thingy showing up? That's not good. Let me group it real quick. There we go. And let me see here. You can also change the HSBC on these if you want. Let me go ahead and just change the size. There we go. I'll open it all up. Go to Hue. You can change the HSBC. So if you want like a crazy floating crystal like this one, blue, green, orange, purple, all that kind of stuff, you can do that. Just click X to go back to the original Hue. But that's how I do my floating islands. They work. It works for me pretty much every time. It does take a little bit of work to get the line work right. Stick a filter on that. Do it right now. Otherwise, it's not going to be a filter tutorial. Not a person. Okay, fine. I'm going to add it. To, I'm going to add it right now. Look, the people have spoken. Texture filter. We're going to plot it in there. I want to make it more gritty. I, I just like that gritty filter so much. Let me just go over here. Now that I've added a filter, this is perfectly acceptable. Okay, this is perfectly okay. All right, let's go at overlay. There we go. Oh, yeah. Get some more. Let me see here. Yeah, I think we can add even a little bit more. Give it even more grit. There we go. Yeah, add some grit to it. This is not any ordinary floating island. Sweet. Yeah, add some filters to it. Looking good. Hey, Callum. Awesome. I'm so glad that you're here. Woo. Happy as ever. Oh, I'm just giddy. I'm just giddy. Overflowing with joy. Well, I'm here with our crazy cool users. Why would I not be excited? Come on. All right. Sweet. Well, let's go ahead and go out of that. Any other questions that people might have? That's how you make a floating island. I'll try to see if I can find that demo. I think there's one around here somewhere. Maybe I'll add it a little bit later. Happy little mountains. Hey, Commander Bond. Thank you. I'm glad. Perfect. Yeah, there's so many neat tricks, so many tricks that you can do. It's so much fun. It, it, it's just great. I absolutely love using filters. They're fantastic. Oh, actually, you know, there's one more map right here I wanted to share with people and just do a quick, um, I wanted to show another trick with HSBC. There's actually a couple of them that I forgot to do. It's a great timing. I'll go ahead and work on a couple of those. I wanted to explain a little bit more about HSBC because HSBC you can come up with some really cool uh, color combinations to make your map look really interesting. So I'm going to show you where I did that. I think also Cynthia, who is the dungeon madam, also does this. Her maps are fantastic. She does like Curse of Strahd maps, and they're super awesome. And she always uses like this kind of purplish tint to it that I absolutely love so much. And so the way that I was able to do all this was using HSBC. And you'll see right here, HSB custom filter. Let me turn it off real quick and you'll kind of see things in its original color. So you have the greens, you have the purples. So it looks totally different, right? This is not at all what it looks like uh, when I have the filter on. So let me turn the filter back on. So what I did is I boosted up the saturation. Let me put it back down to Z, back down to 100. So it seems a little, a little grayish. You know, we want to add more. There's also this 6%, so you can boost it up more this way. If you want to really get it out there, you can. I'm not going to do that. Personally, I'm going to put this back to its original opacity, which should be 60. Oopsie. We'll take it down. We're not, there we go. Uh, let's go back up. I boost up the saturation to give it more color. And you'll notice the hue slider bar. Now, check this out. If I change the hue slider bar, you're going to see a lot of changing in color. And this works great if you want to create, like, you want to turn, let's say that you're doing a campaign where there's a map that is in, there's a map that takes place in two dimensions. Let's say there's a normal realm and everything looks normal. But then if you go through a door or a gate or some kind of portal, it takes you to that same map, but it's in a, a different um, universe, right? Or a different realm. And so messing with that you can really help to change kind of the atmosphere of that map. So that way you um, can actually get two maps for one, a normal map 
It's got the regular colors, green trees, green vines, regular color water or whatever this stuff is right here. Just click that hue button and then boom, you'll go through various colors. So that way you have, let's say, instant fey, instant otherworldly, instant hellscape, instant uh, portal, whatever. Okay, so using HSBC can really, really, really change that. Okay, it looks like there's some questions here. Ay, 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 ay. Why are some fellows only useful on a white background versus a black background? Oh, that's such a great question. I love that question. Why do they work only useful on a white background, black background? Uh, well, I mean, I would assume that has to do with contrast. If you're a super dark map and you decide to use a filter that has dark artifacts on it, uh, it's because there's more overall dark on the map in the composition. And so the effects or, fil or artifacts might not uh, show up so much. If you have an all white, you have a nice clean white canvas with a lot of white on it, then artifacts are probably gonna stick out more because of the contrast. White means more dark elements are gonna pop out against the white. But that would be my suggestion. And feel free if you want to build an example, we'll totally go over that. Well, anyway, back to this one real quick, and we'll go over uh, Callum's question while he prepares that, they prepare that. And so again, HSBC is just fantastic for doing fun things like that, creating that fey or whatever you want. So don't be afraid to mess with that hue slider bar. Just grab a random map, whatever map you want that you have, and just click HSBC and then play with that hue because you'll come up with some crazy fun stuff. Greens, blues, purples, it's it, it, the whole gambit. It's super fun. You can come up with some super cool stuff, okay? So just f keep that in mind. I'm gonna go ahead and go back. All right, you know, and I think there is some other stuff too that I could explain. Let me go over, let me see if I can find some other stuff that I went over. Let's go to the explore page real quick. And um, we'll do one more one more filter breakdown before Callum gets their stuff ready and we'll add some filters in there. Ooh, this is super cool. You know, I really like this one. Is this clonable? No, I want to clone it and do pretty stuff to it. It's so good. Hermchi, you're amazing. I love this. This is amazing. I love it. Oh, beautiful. This is another good one right here. I really like this one. Is this one clonable? No. Oh, poo. Oh, poo, poo. Well, look at the ambiance on this one, adding in some red right here. Oh, that's so cool. I love that. What about world maps? Have we gone any over any world maps yet? Maybe we should go over some world maps that are clonable. We can go in. Ah, here we go. Look at this cool world map. I love this. I'm going to clone it right now. By Dejovial. By Jehovial. Is it a J? Is it silent with an H? Is it Dejovial or is it Jovial? I don't know. It's It's a great name. I love it. Yeah, we didn't really touch up on world maps or anything like that because world maps are really fun and there's so much cool stuff that you can add to a world map. So let's go over a world map, please. Hope I can get my world map to look good watching this and the YouTubes. Oh, believe me, you'll do great. You should totally join, uh, join our Discord server. We have so many awesome moderators and mentors that will totally bump your world map game. Believe me, everyone is super nice. Our Discord server is amazing. It's amazeballs. Everyone loves it there. Super nice. Once in a while, we get a jerk or two, but it's a great place. It's safe. And people are extremely helpful. So go join our Discord. Let's go ahead and go over this map right here. This is a super cool one. I really like this one. I think they've done such a great job. Look, they've added in um, some of this old paper, crinkled paper here. Let me look at that filter. Paper tear right here. These white ones. So let me just turn it off real quick and kind of see it. It's a little bit cleaner cleaner now, but I actually really like this filter because it kind of makes it look like it's weathered. It's got some blotches on it, kind of stain. And I like that weathered look, you know, some maps look really great, really weathered. And you notice that they did this, um, the old paper as well. Let me turn that off. You can kind of see what it looks like when you turn it off. And we'll turn off this one as well because it's hard to see. There we go. I'm just gonna zoom in real quick and take a look. And you see there's not much artifacts out in the ocean. And so we kind of add that old 
paper texture, and you'll see those artifacts sticking out, so that looks really nice. Yeah, they did a great job on this. All these filters were really well done, all of them. And we can we can add some other filters to it just for fun, just to give it a different, entirely different look. So I'll just turn off every single one of them. Look, you even see the parchment here. That parchment really made quite a difference. Like, look at it without parchment. Really bright greens um, and some yellows there. And then if I go ahead and turn on that parchment, it really brings in that that red causing even those mountains, including those um, those snowy mountains and those volcanoes to kind of pop out a little bit more. This crack right here looks really nice, adding that additional red from the parchment style. So great job to Hermichi on that one. It just looks awesome. Hey, thank you for joining the YouTubes. Hey, and hey, don't forget to leave any comments or feedback that you have in the comments, okay? So feel free to ask any questions. And if you have suggestions for future videos, don't be afraid, don't be shy. Just push your neck right out there and just ask. Just be like, hey, I want this, gosh dang it, and get it to me now. All right, don't be afraid. We will totally, we compile all suggestions and we go ahead and go over them and we'll put them into future streams. So super exciting. Let's go ahead and just add a couple filters to this just to give it an extra look. And there's maybe some fun things that I might want to add in there. I'm going to go over with color filters. And there's some fun things that we could do. We could possibly turn this into a black and white. We could add in like a winter to give it a more, more bluish feel to it, which doesn't look really that great. You notice how the blue here kind of browns out some of the brown of the mountains. It kind of makes the white stick out from the snow okay, but it really drowns out that nice... And so this, obviously a winter filter would not look good here, right? The parchment works better. Same thing with overcast. It's just not the right color to really help to emphasize these mountains and the other stamps. That red works so much better. But you could also add in things like cool warm. And cool warm works really well with this map. You've got a range of greens and yellows. And that kind of purplish really brings out, again, the mountain ranges and of course, because there's snow on the top of these peaks, you're going to see some light against dark. That Again, that's called contrast. And that looks great. Honestly, these white mountains are really the focal point from my eye. When I close my eyes and then open them back up and look at the map, my eye immediately wants to go bzzz, boom, right here to where this white is of the snow against these darker shading underneath. Great job on the... Uh, on the texturing below here, adding a little bit of brown underneath here. That's really great. Helps to make sure that these mountains blend in better with your texture, with your texturing. So great job on this map. I really, really like it. Super cool. Maybe in future videos, we can go over some of your videos, add filters to it, or just review some of your own maps. Cause that'd be cool, right? We're setting up a stream and you guys are like, hey, uh, could you, what, what should I do with this map? You go ahead and make it public. We'll go over it. We'll look over it and go do details and stuff like that. Because, hey, who doesn't like live advice on making their map look? Whoa! Because it's fun, right? And that's super exciting. Don't forget to go to our Discord server because, believe me, everyone there is ridiculously helpful. I guarantee it, okay? What are we at? Hour and 30 minutes? We're doing good so far. I'm going to check chat. Oh, I'd love that. I'm going to love these streams. Yes, you are, and me too. I am so glad that you're here. This is so awesome. I love going over people's works and exploring their awesome maps. So I'm super excited about that. That's going to be so much fun. Oh, all right. Well, let's go over one more map. Okay, and then we'll call it good. So I, let's see here. Um, Let's go over... The back to the explore page. We're gonna work on one more map. I went through a world map. Let's go over a parchment map. I think this one was not available to clone. I'm gonna look up just parchment maps. There should be a filter here that lets you do that. So if you go to the explore page, you're gonna find all, click this, you're gonna see some filters here. And it's super nice because you can just go ahead and click 
um, parchment world. Just so that way, all the parchment maps just from that style are just going to pop up. So that's super ridiculously useful if you're looking for particular maps. Don't forget there's also a search bar up here. Just type in what you're looking for. There's also these most viewed, most liked, most cloned. So I'm going to go over some of these. Look for cloned versions of these maps and then we'll go ahead and do kind of the more monochromatic maps. Let me look at this one right here by Stratos Garnath. Ooh, this is, I like the simplicity of this. This is nice. Like the color, like the edgy, like the uh, edges. Kind of looks like it's torn paper. It's cool technique. Use the edgy brush, I can tell. Let's see what we can do to add more to this one. So I'm just going to clone and edit it and we're going to add some more stuff to it. Parchment maps are so much fun to make. Oh, it's all right, Callum. It's quite all right. You can always ask me in chat, ask me right in the uh, in Discord too. We can go over that. I might have also misunderstood the question. Oh. Absolutely, I'll come back to you later, Callum. Absolutely. Awesome. Okay. Here we go. We're just going to wait for this to load. Ooh, I got a pie thrown at me. Mmm, lemon meringue, delicious. <laughs> All right, so I love this map. This is super cool. I love the simplicity of it. But, you know, let's say that you want to add more to it. Like maybe you want to add a... You want to add different things to it to make it look more interesting. So let's add some filters. If anyone has suggestions on what filter to use or what you think might work here, feel free. Let me know what you think looks best. Honestly, there's so many things here. This is already quite yellow. So I don't think a blue, like let's say winter or, or overcast would look good here because you've got that yellowish. So definitely parchment, red sky would probably work here. Let's go ahead and try adding in uh, just parchment to give it a reddish look. So this kind of works well. It looks okay to me. If you don't like it, you can always change it. You can drop down the opacity, how much red there's going to be in it. That's up to you. Okay, we can also go through. Uh, I'll show you some what it looks like with the uh, the ones that don't look good. So let me just delete this one. I'll add that blue, and I'll show you what I mean by blue not working well with this yellow color right here. So let me quickly just go right here. Let me add a blue one right here and you'll see why the blue just doesn't see bluish tints don't seem to work well with these yellows and these uh, kind of oranges. So red sky and parchment are going to work much better, particularly because the parchment style uh, textures, there is a lot of kind of these yellowish kind of colors and stuff so i don't recommend generally using those bluish bluish colors for filters i totally recommend the reddish ones and again you can add more artifacts to this one so you could add old paper like this right over to it and it's going to add a lot of artifacts to it so we can go in and just go overlay boost up this a little bit let me zoom in to make sure that it's working let me just zoom in. Let me go over to repeat. Let me turn it off and just see the difference. I'm not actually seeing a lot of effects. It, maybe it's because, oh, that looks like an error right there. None of the filters even showing up. Now that's kind of interesting. Let me delete that and try it again. I'm just gonna go ahead and save these changes and refresh the page. I think I've just got some old data there. Is it possible to make a blueprint look like parchment? Where it's particular like where everything's particularly blue, blue background with white line work. Is that what you mean, Your Majesty? Blue background white lines. Is that what you mean? If that is what you mean, then so yeah, you're trying to make it look like you want it to make it look like crumpled, like crimp, crumpled up paper or white spackle, like paint got on it or it got burnt or something like that. Is that what you, is that what you mean? Like a modern blueprint. Do you mean just how to make one or just make it look parchment? Because making one shouldn't be, making one shouldn't be too difficult. 
Uh, you just make a just take a solid blue color and then just use the path tool with white lines to make the blueprint part. That's actually really cool. And I actually I think there has been some users who have done it. I think Calvin Streeting has done blueprints before. I have uh, done a couple of them, but I've never actually um, shared them with anybody. They're more like I just tucked them away into my my bag of unshared maps like an evil villain that I am. <laughs> so yeah. <clears throat> yeah, let's go back over this real quick. Let me quickly uh, add this filter onto it again. One moment, we're gonna go into parchment, old paper. Please show up this time, please, please. Oh, weird, it's not showing up, that is bizarre. Well, that might be an error, oh, there it goes, there it goes, awesome. You see a little bit of texturing, a little bit more texturing when you turn that on, so that's kind of nice. We can increase the opacity. So it gives it a little bit more texture, that looks nice. Let's say we can go back in, add in that parchment. And we can drop that down a little bit. And then we can also add in clarity if you wanted to, to kind of make things pop out a little bit more. And so you have this nice kind of rugged, dirt looking uh, parchment map by adding in those extra artifacts with the, the parchment, old paper, clarity. And then you can even add some of that spackle stuff as well. I think it's right here, grain. Is that the right one? I'm not sure. Let me. Turn it off real quick. Nope, I don't think grain is the right one, though grain does look cool. I do like that. That looks cool. I think there's another one too that's got some, maybe it's paper tear. Is that the one with the white artifacts on it? Yeah, it is. Perfect. Let me go to there. Let me boost it up 100%. You can kind of see these white kind of artifacts here. It's a little too white against the red, so you can always just drop the opacity down. And you can also stretch it as well so you're kind of adding in some white artifacts into it that looks kind of nice yeah absolutely awesome yeah maybe you know what a stream on how to make blueprints would actually be a pretty cool stream i should write that down but um yeah blueprints I, you mean like maybe a blueprint of a ship the blueprint of a house those kind of things, maybe even the schematic of a, a vehicle or a ship, something like that. Maybe we can look into that. I'd have to go over, uh, make make a bunch and kind of go over that and see which ones work best. But yeah, that's totally doable. I'll write that down on my to-do list and we'll see what people think about that. But yeah, so parchment maps, adding in uh, you know, the paper tear, old paper, some grain, adding a reddish tint to it can kind of give it that dirty, gritty, old paper kind of look. And I absolutely recommend that if you're kind of going for that old timey look, gosh darn it, well, fetal sticks. I want an old timey map. Absolutely. Yeah, that would be my suggestion. Yeah, we'll go over that, King Clown. I'll ask some people about it and see what they think, okay? Ooh, super cool. I think that's the last one for maps. I can turn all the filters off. You see the difference. So this is what it was before and it still looked really nice. And then when you add all these filters to it, boom, giant change. So it's, there's a lot of artifacts and a lot going on. So you, things might get blurred a little bit. So if you have small text, I just want to say that when you're making a map and there's a lot of artifacts on it and you, you're, you can't really see your text, I totally recommend changing the outline to something that can be seen. So if you wanna change the outline to white or black, let me just go in here real quick. Let me turn that off. Let me see here. I, I just wanna mention that when you're doing parchment maps and you have all these artifacts, you might have to change some of your text. So I'm gonna select all the text. Honestly, I'm not so sure if this, this color works out well, a white might work a little bit better. Let me just apply white. Oopsie, that is the outline. Yikes. That's not what I wanted. My mistake, I wanted to make the actual text white instead. And I also want to drop the opacity down just a hair. Down just, oh, maybe a little bit more, I can't even see them. But you might have to change text as you see fit as well when you're applying filters because sometimes filters can ruin a texture of that or, or ruin a text. 
But all my recommendation is really just to group all the text and put it on layer five and then just put whatever the obstructing texture or texture filter that's on top of it below that. So that way your text doesn't get drowned out. So I totally recommend that you think about uh, thinking about your texture, your text color in relation to the rest of your map. So if your map is really light, has a lightish tint to it, it's kind of light, add darker uh, text. If the map is generally a little bit darker, obviously you're not going to want to add dark text, add lighter text, okay? And don't forget about uh, triadic color or a think about color scheme. Think about complementary colors like blue and yellow. Blue and yellow are complementary colors. Purple and green are complementary colors. Go just quick, quick Google search. Look up color theory. You don't have to worry about reading up on all this crazy theory. Once you just type in color theory or complementary colors into the Google search, just type in, just go ahead and push the image tab. It'll take you right over to images and look at uh, complementary colors because that's going to help you as an artist to make sure that these colors complementary complement each other in the final composition. Okay. So go look up co complementary colors. That's really going to help with your text. And we can go over a full on stream that just kind of covers how to apply text because there's so many different techniques and strategy. Uh, and, and stuff like that when when you're applying text to a map so we'll go ahead and factor in adding text to a map in a future stream and we're at 11 40 a.m pst my time and i think i'm gonna wrap it up an hour and 40 minutes was pretty long we can do uh longer streams from here on out i think because twitch can handle it it's a great for doing that and don't forget, if you missed, if you're late to show up to the party, that's okay. You missed anything, I'm going to go ahead and upload this video right after the stream or after my lunch. I'm going to add it to YouTube, and that way you can watch it from beginning to end on YouTube. And I think there's obviously a replay on Twitch, but whatever platform is your preference, YouTube, Twitch, okay? So I'll be adding this to YouTube right after this stream. Thank you, everybody. It's been awesome. I'm really glad. Thank you to all the new users who showed up. Awesome. So glad that you're here. Don't forget to add suggestions for future streams because we listen. Wait, what was that you said? I wasn't listening. No, I'm just kidding. I'm being a jerk. Don't let me get away with that. <laughs> all right. Hey, thank you, everybody. It's been so much fun. I thank you for all your suggestions, for all your questions, and thank you for spending your time with lonely little old me. I appreciate it so much. I'm glad that you were here. So, hey, again, next streams are coming up. Under, uh, let's see here. Next week, Monday, 28th, how to break buildings. The 30th, which is a Wednesday, how to create throne rooms. So go check those out. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you on Monday of next week. Take it easy, everyone. Merry map making, and please stay safe and healthy, okay? Avi design. Cheerio. Goodbye.